Trigger warning, some of the clips in this video talk about SA, CSA, and DV. It's not bullying when you show the inconsistencies and flat out lies of a liar. I'm not a liar, I don't lie. I've never lied, never. I'm not a pathological liar. I don't have a personality disorder. There's a lot of people that don't like me because I tell the truth about stuff. I could never lie. I had ADHD, so there was nothing really I could lie to them about. Like, I don't know how to lie. 12 seconds later. I lied about everything. <laughs> Molly said I'm a liar. Well, she's a liar too. Like, she's probably a bigger liar. One of the perpetual lies that I hear about myself is that I'm a liar. Like, a lot of people always say that I'm a liar. And I'm always like, you don't know me if you think I'm a liar. I can't tell a lie to save my life. Did I uh, lie at the time? Probably, but I didn't mean to lie. Always m admit when I do something wrong. I'm like the worst liar ever. <laughs> I don't lie about a lot of things. I actually don't lie about a lot of things. Can we remove that? Block, 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 block. I never tell people to send super chats. Make sure to use the super chat feature. Super chat? What do you mean super chat? You can give me a super chat. If there's a question that you want me to ask or answer and you want me to see it, um, use the super chat. I had a meeting with my YouTube manager this week and we were talking about like super chats and they're like, don't be shy, ask for super chats. And I'm like, oh, it's so uncomfortable doing that. If you have a question and you want me to make sure that I get to it, use the super chat feature. I've never been that person that does that. Use the super chat feature. I just set up the super chat. If you guys want to do super chats and support the channel, that would be great. We will always be so thankful and grateful of super chats and stickers. There hasn't been a lot of those tonight. I know it's, we're in a recession, but you can always support the channel that way. I don't like to be the first to report. I was the first outlet that reported it. Tough Topic, stop. I am the first to report the court records being unsealed. Tough Topic on YouTube is acting like she broke the story. This was over some court records that dealt with some victims. Somebody in Katie's comments pointed out to her to try to be respectful of those victims and to not worry about who broke the story first. Katie responded, I am always respectful. Stop it. I'm tired of her using my Instagram to steal my work. I've never said that I'm a tea channel. I have all kinds of tea. If you guys don't want to listen to the tea about Janelle and Leah, then don't freaking watch my channel. People love to say, Katie, trauma's not tea. And I'm like, when was this a tea channel? I wanted to use my platform, not just for tea. It's their job to sell the drama, like what I do here. It's really important to me that this channel not just be about tea, but it also be about getting back to really what I do. Dude, this is a commentary channel. If you don't like my opinions, find one that you do. I try not to judge people. My whole job is to have opinions and be judgmental. <laughs> I don't tell people to report things. Can someone report her for spam, please? Please report this group. I never tell people to like call CPS. I never say to like make a report based on this. If you feel like you've been defrauded, file a police report. Just report her. That's all you have to do is report the channel. I'm not gonna call CPS on anyone because my job is to report. I'm not here to interfere in stories. I have to report on stories. I will continue to report her to Team YouTube. I have tried to report repeatedly and YouTube does not take them down. I never told you guys to report anything. I did tell people to report the video that she made. I always find it odd when someone wants to rewrite history and claim that something didn't happen or isn't the truth. If you know something, consider do consider contacting HSI. I don't like the aspect of YouTube where we hang on to screenshots. I have screenshots for days. And once we know what happened, we can drop our receipts. I'll post the receipts. I actually posted them on my YouTube channel months ago. There's an entire video about her. They're already up on my YouTube. They're literally up. Let's, whoops.
When Katie accidentally shared this part of her computer, you can see that she has over 25,000 screenshots in a folder. And side note, who the f*** has 700 selfies? This is the part about YouTube that is just not healthy. When we're angry at someone, we shouldn't be like having to put out our screenshots. I have screenshots of the shit that you've said about Leslie. So if you want to play both sides, girl, I can release it. That's like what this world has been coming up to. There, look at that. He's like, why are you taking screenshots of this? So then when I sent her like the Discord and I was like, what's this? And she was like, wow. And I said, it feels like a threat when you say that to me and I'm being very honest. Tati has huge drama channels talking about her, bringing far more exposure to her than I am. And he said, I'm not threatening you, I'm trying to help you. And I said, hello, does your mom know that you're messaging adults? I don't speak to minors without parents knowing, because that's my role. I try not to engage with minors. But you'll share private messages that a minor sent you on your very public platform. She said, do you think I care? No, you're an adult speaking lies and bullying others get a life. I have proof of all of these things. But you know what? I'm not a child. Here. This is me texting Amy. The shade. That is Amy in her words. I didn't know we had to provide proof. I didn't know we had to provide receipts. I have more. Just wait. Here's Amy. Are we in high school? I got more. People think you're staying with me. I feel like you got heat and you blamed me. Published the private email that I sent to her that I told her she did not have the consent to publish on her channel to further humiliate me. She started opening up to me. And you can see I said off the record, but you know what? Sometimes off the record is going to go on the record and I'm going on right now. In August of 2020, she told me this via text. I'm never going to go into another creator's DMs and pretend to be their friend and then like use them for content. If you don't want to work with me privately on issues and you don't want to resolve the issues privately, then that to me tells me that you don't care enough about me to help me. So if you want to criticize me in a video and then I reach out to you and I privately discuss things with you and then you use that against me in a video or you refuse to talk to me, you have no interest in actually helping me. I really don't think she should be questioning why people don't want to talk to her privately because if you send a DM to Katie or an email, if things go south, she will not hesitate to share that on Twitter, Instagram, on YouTube videos. Oh no, I didn't realize that the cat got your face that bad. You need to get that cleaned up and put some Neosporin on it before you get an infection again. Um, I don't have any scratches. That's weird. Did I get scratched by one of the animals? Oh my god. I got scratched by one of the animals. This is why you got that giant boil on your face because you frequently touch your makeup brushes with your fingers or your thumb that are usually infected already. And then you put that brush on your face when you have an open wound. Fearing for my life for the last nine months because of COVID. It is so out of control right now because people don't take it seriously. We just finished going out to lunch. I need to get my, need to get my Botox fixed, you guys. <laughs> Um, and I'm getting my hair done next week. July 2020, stay home if possible. June 2020, I'm going out to buy makeup today. July 2020, tonight I went to the spa. Today, we are going to talk about something that I absolutely am obsessed with, fraud. I don't want to accuse anyone of tax fraud. A lot of these families find creative ways not to pay taxes. Everything is gifts because you don't pay taxes on gifts. And as he makes more and more money, instead of doing the right thing to pay the government, he just spends all of his time defrauding the government. It's insane. Absolutely sane. One thing you should do is pay your taxes. So make sure you send your kids to school with their glue sticks and scissors. And in first grade, they can learn how to do fraud the Chrisley way. A lot of people keep asking me to comment on whether or not she's pregnant. I refuse to speculate on whether or not someone's pregnant. It's kind of hard to tell specifically whether or not Anna might be pregnant. When I slow it down and zoom in on Anna, I think it becomes a little bit more clear. I think there's this like entitlement people have about pregnancy where they think it's their business to know whether or not someone's pregnant. It looks like she could be easily six months. I posted photos of the registry. She said, stop posting about me. You don't even know me. And I said, I run a channel that covers reality television.
read that again. You do not know me. Don't take me in your SHIT. And I said, do you deny that the registry, registry is yours? And she said, I do. Now leave me alone. And I said, then why did Chloe say that you were pregnant? And she said, ask Chloe that. And I said, there's a Target registry, a bump registry, and Pinterest pins for a baby boy. She not only was harassing a woman and demanding that she tell her if she was pregnant, but she was also, again, sharing private messages from somebody or do I think it's my place to out somebody's pregnancy? The weight distribution is solely in her midsection. Pregnant or just fat? Pregnant or just fat? Pregnant or just fat? They put out clickbait. They tease things that aren't true. They tell fictitious stories. They literally will lie about just about anything as long as you'll get views. I did a video on Mary Brown was missing and it was like a play on words. Like I don't really think Mary Brown is missing. Title of Katie Joy's video. Sister wives, Mary Brown goes missing. People were like taking that very literal. And I feel like sometimes with titles, people think like, oh, she's really missing. Mary Brown goes missing. No, not really. She's off Instagram, which if you watch the video is exactly what I said. How is this clickbait? Because I haven't told you my big news, Morgan. This is the thumbnail to that video where she's saying we have big news. It totally looks like thumbnails people put out when they announce that they are pregnant. And Katie knows this. And that is why she did it, in my opinion. And the big news that she announced in this video was Todd's takes. Which she allowed him to do two episodes and then she put the kibosh on it. We're getting to my quick clickbait so my how is this clickbait so my title says we have big news updates on gabby petito and brian laundry that's what i'm talking about so can you explain to me how i'm clickbaiting you has to placate his audience and say i clickbait titles oh, shut up unirock you clickbait too it would have been nice to see you cover this properly and not use the catchy headlines the title of this video is Jill Duggar's stress is showing as she tells fans to chill out following Josh's arrest. That title is making it seem like Jill was telling fans to chill out in regards to Josh. This had absolutely nothing to do with Josh. The timing of it might have been after Josh's arrest, but she put it in the title to make people think that it was in regards to the arrest when all it was was Jill gave her dog some of her breast milk and when she got some negative comments comments on it. She told those people to chill. It was shocking to find out that they were using a clip from my channel without even talking to me. People use my videos for commentary. They are more than they can do that. That's totally fine. Bill with 1.35 million subs took about 10 plus minutes of my work on Micah Stauffer with very long clips, then told the story as if it were hers. Like, I appreciate the shout out, but that seems like a lot of my content for her video. Remember that time MTV used audio copyrighted to my channel and they didn't credit me on their show? I haven't forgotten it. MTV, don't credit me, fine. Use my copyrighted audio that I own. Here, when she's telling people that she did not try to sell the audio to TMZ, she says that she can't sell audio that she's not the owner of. And put it on your channel and don't credit the source. Lord, now you're trying to take cred for the audio. You might, you have mighty big cojones. Who released it? True Vixen, I'm just waiting. Tell me, who released it, True Vixen? She contradicted herself by saying that she owns the audio and then also saying that she doesn't own the audio and also that it's public record. But it is so hilarious to see her be so adamant about how she owns it and how offended she is that they used it and didn't credit her because she did not own it. I can't believe she actually thought that she owned it. She did not record it. Somebody sent it to her. So whoever sent it to her is the person that owned it if they were the one that recorded it. It is so funny. The fact that when you're a media outlet, when you're a blogger, when you're a blogger, they should credit the source. It's just what you do. You credit where it comes from. I was provided more than 15 clips. Even TMZ credited me. I was on TMZ, you guys. You can see my picture on TMZ. I don't have any um, active copyright strikes that I know of. The only ones that I have right now, I don't have any um, active copyright strikes that I know of. The only ones that I have right now. There's some outlets that have a lot of money and so lawsuits don't bother them. They'll put the information out and if they get sued, they get sued. And I don't want to get sued. I would love to be sued. I'm not afraid of being sued. You need to get a hobby. You need to find a job and you need to like 
worry about, you know, not getting a defamation lawsuit for all the crap you've said about me. Look at me, I'm getting sued. I can report what I find, and the only way you can be sued is if you aren't telling the truth and you maliciously spread false information. I am not afraid of that. I have been sued. Cults sue people all the time. Tati Westbrook, not a cult. Todd Chrisley, not a cult. Steve McRae, not a cult. Maybe it's all the lawsuits that have been filed against you. That's funny because there's not any lawsuits filed against me. 12 seconds later. As I was going through preparing for this new bogus lawsuit that I'm involved in right now. This is the hypocrisy of her. Unfortunately, when you're in a lawsuit, you can't speak. You can't talk about it. My attorney today said Tati has no case. She's a public figure and it would be impossible for her to prove given her own issues. You can't share details about it. You can't tell anyone what's happening. He also said the motion they filed was underhanded. He also said I won't get in trouble for anything. He said this lawsuit will ultimately backfire. The permeating problem in this call is the way that sexual assault is taught to the kids. It's the way that sex is repressed from these kids. I don't think it's about being sexually repressed. I don't try to hate anyone. Khloe Kardashian. I hate her. I hate self-help people. I hated this kid in high school. What about Jill? What about Jill? I hate Jill. I hate her so much. Someone said I had a 90s aesthetic, like stuck in the 90s aesthetic, and I'm like, all my decorations and everything I buy in my house is definitely not from the 90s. Reminds me of the 90s. That's the way love goes, uh, the video by Janet Jackson. I don't have a 90s vibe. That's what this whole vibe with my face reminds me of. I rarely ever share with you what I get for my makeup. I'll show you the makeup I've been using. I got a brand new palette. This is my foundation. This is the color I've been wearing, this face palette. This is my blush. My skin tones don't look great on this one. Pat McGrath, the Biba, the Glam. I have this translucent powder, I'll show you. This is the Benefit Roller. Huda Nudes. It just has a lot of like good neutrals. The Glam Face Palette by Natasha. The Naked Reloaded. This is my bronzer. I've been using um, HD. I'm not a makeup artist. So I'm never gonna tell you how to do your makeup or show you how to do them. Cause I don't do things correctly and it's not yours. You don't take it. One thing I don't encourage is going after anyone's appearance. And you're a 37 year old woman that apparently has had so much work done. You look like you're 45. She looks so much older than her actual age. People that are miserable have to put other people down. And I just won't do that. Christine, Robin, I always forget the, the, the blonde one that's frumpy as hell. I'm sorry, I don't have a lot of eyebrows. Like, these are the worst I can do. I have zero eyebrows. I don't pluck Shanna. God, you're a dummo. I do not like deleting comments. I'll delete shit all day long. But the comments about my eyebrows are unnecessary and cruel. Janelle is like on Instagram posting pictures of her janky brows. I'm done with the petty and mean about my brows. I don't care if you think they are off, too long, or ugly. If you can't actually do your own brows, I'm not gonna buy a brow kit from you. Keep your damn comments to yourself or else get on camera and do all my hard work for me. The horrific pettiness of you all when I'm doing a job. Her brows look terrible. I am pro-women making choices for themselves, which means wear whatever you want, put your hair however. There's so much makeup on her face that she literally looks like a cartoon to me. Wear brows or don't wear brows, I don't care. I'm here to judge the women from Teen Mom 2 and all other reality shows, and tonight we're gonna do a whole lot of judgmental snark against the Duggars. Do you think that I pull my hair out and that's why I have to put a sharpie for my um i have to use a sharpie to put on my eyebrows actually it's not a sharpie i use a brow kit and most women today use brow kits i don't have any fake accounts which i have a couple socks sock accounts in i don't use sock accounts one of my sock accounts got into his group i don't run my business that way i never <laughs> get into these groups with my socks and i don't tell you to do with your money what to do james is paying child support but Probably not what he should be paying. Isaiah is filming on a 
camera that's $130,000 for TikTok videos, for Instagram videos. $130,000 camera to make TikTok videos? What teen mothers do you know that are like, oh, let's just go to Hawaii for two weeks? They went to Costa Rica, and now they're in, like, only a couple months ago. And then Kayla's just in Mexico with her kids, and now they're in Hawaii. I don't like this, you guys. I don't like it. I don't like to give tips or advice for things because I don't want to be one of those influencers that gives tips or advice for things. She famously decided to have her um, bridesmaids wear dresses that she ordered online and then when they actually tried them on they fit terribly and she didn't care. She made them wear them anyway and she only served ice cream at her reception because she just was cheap. I don't live in a world where I tell other people how to live their lives. It's really not that hard to buy a clothes dry like a clothes wrap. Jessa, you don't have to use your kitchen table. So I don't police what other people do. The money that you paid for your Tesla should have gone to your son. The least she could have done was gotten, like, purchased something that was, like, fake. Like, the flowers behind me. Those are fake. But they're, they're like, fabric. Go to World Market or Pier 1 or wherever. So it was pointing out the hypocrisy. For crying out loud, Farah lives in a 700 square foot, like, studio apartment. This is a girl that made millions by selling, like, cutouts of her hoo-ha. She's on OnlyFans because she can't make cash doing anything else. I don't care if you do sex work. I literally don't care. Do you think the kind of people are that are buying a $5,000 date with her? And what do you think their expectations are if they're going to plop down five grand for one night with her? Cucumber or eggplant washing with a side of backdoor anal beads. Use your words sparingly um, in terms of graphicness. I want to keep things happy here. Stretch the hymen with inserting one finger at a time. I just want to make sure that we keep our chats really clean. Um, try not to trigger anyone. I took a 12 year old little girl and went into a, into a like temple and ripped her on tape. I have like profanity filters. So like someone tried to say F off Lizzie. Fuck off Lizzie. And it didn't go through because I don't allow profanity in the comments. What the fuck is wrong? I don't give a shit. If you're going to talk about Gabby being gone, um, let's use other words than anything graphic that could trigger anyone. It's a fucking murder. I want my videos to not have language in them. Fuck off. If you're cleaning your house and your kids are listening, they're not going to hear anything nasty. And if Robert wants his dick rubbed, what are you gonna do? You have to control their penises so they don't go in your vagina. Stupid ass lies. Fucking website. Dirty ass hands. Ticky tack bullshit. You call the fucking news. And there's like so many kids that watch along with their parents. So I always try to keep in mind like the little ears. Back your anal beads. Answer the question without being a dickhead. They will defend everything that bitch does. You guys always give me crap. You're always like, Katie, you always, you never say those words and you're always like spelling out certain words and you don't curse and you're super weird about in the chat. Like you don't like cursing and certain words in the chat. That's because I'm trying to stay monetized. How did you and your husband meet? We met through an online dating site 13 and a half years ago. What's the best dating website? Oh my god, girl, I have no clue. I met my hubby before there were apps for dating. I will always support Brittany, and she's been through hell. Her hair always looks nappy. It looks like she has terrible extensions. It's like she's never learned how to properly brush her hair. I don't think, like, putting out those videos is helpful to her. Dancing to Kokomo by the Beach Boys. Just watch this. Watching Britney Spears on Instagram, I often wonder if she knows that she can buy shorts that fit and she doesn't have to roll down the waist. I am going to always be team Britney. The smoky look she does with her eyes is like that. What is that? What is with her eyes? It just, to me, it's like she's just not well. I don't even talk about teen mom girls. Janelle and Farah are both basically broke. What are you talking about? Have you watched my channel? I see it so much happening with like the teen moms. <coughs> those poor girls. I mean, you don't have to like the show, but those girls get so harassed. Janelle, like you might have been cool on MTV, but you are literally fucking nothing anymore. Their way to gain subscribers is by putting other people down. I don't need your ass for clout. And I just never have been a part of that. I don't like to bash other channels. So if you want to be a cult favorite and watch her be not funny, go on to Farrah's channel. Vanessa's face was like right up to the camera and I just kept noticing that she like had a booger in her nose. I was just distracted by that. I was like, all right, she's got a booger in her nose. All right.
A narcissist's life is really quite simple. Every conversation, every situation, every interaction, every moment has one overarching theme. Let's make this about me. All I see is people talking about their own stuff. And now the chat is focusing on Susan and Debbie. I understand that you're talking about what happened to you, but when you're chatting and I'm talking, how do you listen to me? It seems kind of rude to me. It's heartbreaking when you see another mama who has a kiddo that's sick. I honestly can't imagine like sitting here and having someone open up to you about the hardest day of their lives and you're sitting there talking to strangers and you're literally just like not even listening and you're just talking about yourself. And this happens so much with this world. We as parents start competing in a way with one another that like our experience was worse. He told us he was the sickest child in the entire ICU, the highest risk for not making it. I was like, this is literally the most toxic environment of people wanting attention and the competition of who has the sickest kid. Literally having a doctor <laughs> sit you down and say your child is the sickest child on this floor. It's the craziest dichotomy in the entire world. He believed my son was going to die. It's like one in 15,000, which actually, if you think of rare disease, that's actually not super rare. I mean, it's rare, but it's not super rare. My son is like one in a seven billion, but I'm not trying to be snotty. I'm just saying like this woman is like, and, and her daughter is fine. like. But not for his whole condition. Anyways. Do you always know like what a narcissist has done because of what they accuse other people of doing? I've just been bullied so much by these drama channels. A narcissist will if they are being mean to someone, we'll say the other person is being mean to them. That's not why I don't like him. He's been very awful to me. I've covered a lot of people over the years that have antisocial personalities. Narcissists, sociopaths, psychopaths, because I cover a lot of crime. When you're dealing with someone who is not an honest person and might be a narcissist or an antisocial personality, you have to kind of do what's called reverse uno, because what they do is called projection. Literally nobody wants to like know who she is because she has screwed over every single person on YouTube and everyone hates her. You have to sort of temper what she says because there's a lot of dishonesty, misdirection and projection that happens and gaslighting and deflection. I am in the situation I am in right now because of Jeffree Star and I'm the scapegoat. Todd Kisley has literally spent most of the last few weeks blaming everyone but himself. That's what gaslighting narcissistic people do. People who are narcissists do not acknowledge that they're narcissists. Sometimes I think when she's saying these things, she's actually talking about herself. I'm definitely not a narcissist. Like I've definitely never had that. In fact, I don't have any personality disorder. Don't be afraid to get sued by narcissists because narcissists are always going to narcissist. How's not being able to legally talk about Todd Chrisley or any of his family members ever again going for you, Katie? I'm just a YouTube journalist. I don't necessarily think of myself as a journalist. I'm a blogger. According to my a lawyer, yes, I'm a reporter. I talk about shit on my column in YouTube. You do not have to have credentials to be a reporter. That's actually not true. I actually did not go to school for journalism. I wanted to, though. People will refer to me as a journalist, but I don't have, like, training in journalism. There's this, like, very big misnomer that journalists have degrees in journalism, and that's just simply not true. Journalism is learning it as you go. Having the ability to, like, have the balls to put a story out, being brave. I'm about to get risky. That's really what journalism is, more than like learning how to do it in school. We don't have to have a degree in reporting. She's technically true there because you don't need a journalism degree. But if you would apply for a job as a journalist or a reporter, and you do not have a degree in journalism, communication, or a related field, you're going to have a very hard time getting a job when there are candidates who actually study journalism. My entire job is reporting. They like to not call me a reporter because they feel like it's justified because I'm an independent journalist. I don't necessarily think of myself as a journalist. My job exists in the media where I report on topical, trending topics, cults. I interview people. The kind of interviews Katie Joy likes to give are to registered SOs. He uh, is a registered SO. Yes, that's correct. Caleb Williams was living with the Duggars in 2018 after some stuff happened between him and a young girl. Caleb, who was 23 at the time, had gotten a 16-year-old pregnant. In the middle of a sticky situation up in Illinois, grandpa and mom sent Caleb down to stay with the Duggars. Smart, right? Because the Duggars have teen girls and Caleb just got a teen girl pregnant. Whatever. As a result of getting that the teenager pregnant, he is on the SO registry. Jana was not hooking up with this guy who has the shady feelings. Jana does not deserve to be connected to someone that has 
done these types of things. And then she constantly interrupts the person she's interviewing. Even in the courtroom. I think your relationship is going to be complicated. And, and you very would have thought they would have given you sort of a per diem. Think that the so federal- are you calling them? I don't. To me, this doesn't feel like incompetent. Ruins it with her lazy editing. Used cars that are like kind of don't the lie. low end. But if you're going spectrum, to do right? something like From this, my understanding, own up to it. More don't like blame Jed's everybody and his brother. Bit. And yawns during the interview. For that to happen, and I, mm. I forgive him. That's how journalism. I just don't understand how she can say he's shady, he's not good enough for Jana. She's insinuating that by staying with the Duggars, Caleb is going to impregnate all of the teenage girls. And then she brings him on her channel to give him a voice. That just doesn't make sense to me. In this clip, I forget who she's talking about, but she's talking about how bad it is that a 23-year-old was with a 16-year-old. So why doesn't she feel that same way about Caleb? He knows what's right and what's wrong because she was a 17-year-old girl when she met him and he was a 23-year-old man. I know I've mentioned this interview with Caleb several times on my channel, but it's one of the things that really pissed me off about Katie. I don't think she cares who she interviews and has on her channel because in my opinion, she has no morals. Again, in my opinion, as long as she gets views, she does not care what she does. The people that tell me that I'm not a journalist are the people that are suing me. I don't necessarily think of myself as a journalist. How am I a reporter? I'm a reporter. I'm protected under the First Amendment. I'm a reporter. I am a reporter and I report on reality television. I'm a reporter. There's been a lot of chatter and a lot of chaos that surrounds me. Y'all, that's just the world of being a reporter. There's always going to be people that have opinions about my reporting. <laughs> Are you a real reporter? What does that mean? I'm a real person and I report. Block, 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 block. What am I reporting that's false? Always want to make sure that you've got all your eyes, cross all your T's, make sure that everything is sourced, making sure that every time that you allege something, it has a document to be sourced to, or that you're saying this is where this came from. How come you were asked 22 hours ago about the court filing, but your source only confirmed with incorrect info? <clears throat> Maggie Morgan, my source is, I'm not going to talk about this anymore because I trust my source. No, I'm not going to name my sources. This source is the Westbrook's business partner in Halo Beauty, Clark Swanson. Well, I don't have breaking news, Tony, so perhaps you should go somewhere else. I don't do the same kind of reporting. I don't pound pavement. I don't show up at hospitals. That's not how I do my job. If you don't like how I report things, you don't have to follow me. If you want me to only report facts, if you don't like how I report, watch a creator who does what they do. I'm not going to be a different reporter at all. I sort of learned a few more things and I was like, okay, okay, all right, all right, all right. I promised my friend it wouldn't drop anything, but I'm just gonna say like, okay, okay, uh-huh, uh, -huh, yeah, wink, wink, wink. I don't consider myself a journalist. I'm not the only journalist that he was after. I'm the kind of reporter that likes to be able to show you the evidence that I have. Do all reporters wear shirts that say t-shirt? There is like journalistic ethics, right? One of them is to follow UNICEF's rules when it comes to discussing child victims of SA or CSAM. One of those things is to not identify them. I think like is like between the ages of nine and 12 when it happened in any way, shape or form. Suddenly Anna scrubbed all the photos and evidence that was ever around. So then people started wondering if there was something that was happening to She's gonna probably try to say that she's a journalist, but she's not a journalist. She's a professional troll. She can't use that she's using this for journalism. So I don't know if there's truth to her saying that she wasn't going to use this for commercial use because she has profited off of this. It's disturbing. Two licensed attorneys who know nothing about the law in Minnesota are illegally live streaming the court proceeding today of a hearing involving motions filed in the lawsuit Robert Shin versus Without a Crystal Ball. WOAB does not supper either creator breaking the rules of the court. The judge knows who is breaking the rules now. We will be requesting that these creators be barred from any future hearings. They are attorneys and should know the rules of the court, but they don't. They will be lucky if we don't report them to the state bar for these actions. In discussing Josh Duggar's arraignment that she attended 
attended via Zoom where you were not allowed to take pictures, videos, screenshots, anything. Katie says, I have a picture of him at the arraignment. I wish I could share it. Here's what I'll tell you about the arraignment today. He was not wearing an orange jumpsuit. He was actually wearing a black and white jumpsuit. I grabbed a screenshot just just for record so I could have like a memory of what he was doing. It reeks like her hypocrisy. She has attacked victims of crimes. I think that is a problem. And I think you have to be extremely mindful when people are victims of crimes that you not re-victimize them. Part of me thought she was just being bratty. Like she would just go from crying to fine, from crying to fine. And it reminded me of when my son pitches a fit. Kids are off limits and should be off limits. Kids can get a little bit bratty when they don't get their way. Everyone's like, you called Sophia brat. And I'm like, can kids not get bratty? Poor Sophia has no idea, but her mother's making her a monster. I was gonna look at Sophia's, Farrah's daughter's videos, but then I thought, I don't wanna bully a little girl. If I review one of her videos, I feel like I'm being mean to her and she can't help that her mom's trash. I don't ever speak ill about the kids. I mean, look at those eyes. He looks like a zombie. Kids should never be talked about. This little girl is gonna turn into a spoiled little something. Mom and dad, feed your damn kids. These kids are so malnourished and so not taking care of each other. Oh my God, it's so gross. Sometimes when you have a child that doesn't eat candy or care much for trick or treating, you find creative ways to give them an amazing Halloween experience. My son ate Cheetos and M&Ms. I'm like the worst liar ever. Who else is with me that the best part of Christmas is watching little ones open gifts? Watching the magic of Christmas with kids is my favorite thing about the season. Do I enjoy spending time with them? Maybe. I mean, I like kids, but they're not my favorite. I call children crotch fruit. It's hypocritical. We wouldn't do this if we weren't passionate about it. It's never been about money. I do my job for money. I don't care to make a dime on these kinds of stories. YouTube has demonetized nearly all of my videos exposing pseudoscience. A new policy went out this month to crack down on alternative health, even those that expose. Therefore, I'm no longer able to make these videos. Money, money. I want justice. I want to raise awareness. I will not be touching Jeffrey Epstein or Maxwell. Jeffrey Epstein's name will get you demonetized. I don't think any of the networks care about the kids beyond the money they make. I don't understand why creators can't talk about child abuse advocacy for the voiceless without fear of demonetization. Same for domestic violence and sexual assault. I'd much rather discuss crimes against children and the injustices of victims of domestic violence and sexual assault. That's literally my passion, but YouTube calls that controversial. I am an advocate for children. I don't care if it's illegal or not. I'm asking you to do the ethically right thing and not post photographs of other people's children online. Have some common sense, please. Posting a minor child's photographs that are not yours online is weird. Molly's husband screams at her subscribers. I'll call anybody the C word because I don't give a shit. I'll call you whatever the fuck I want to call you. They're all pieces of shit. Molly's husband goes off. Every one of these fucking people that does this shit, they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. I was Gabby Petito. I dated a narcissistic abuser. Leaving him was so hard. I only dated him for four years, but the damage he did to my psyche has lasted a lifetime. I am a survivor of the big R word. I'm also someone that understands what happens when somebody of power or has more influence or say stature in your community can really make the person who has been in that the victim of the assault silenced. That happened to me. Do you have that one ex-boyfriend where you just, you detest them so much because they were such terrible, a terrible human being? That's that ex-boyfriend. He was horrible to me. He was so A-B-U, uh, uh A-B-U-S-I-B-E. People around Gabby said that like she never said anything and everyone thought they had the perfect relationship and I just kept thinking about myself. I advocate a lot about domestic violence. I'm not an advocate. I'm really just an advocate against you know, abusive behavior. Do you think Jen Harley and Larissa were like swapping DV stories? And if you are dealing with it, there's so much shame. If you stay, nobody's gonna be angry with you. We know how hard it is to leave. It doesn't matter. There's plenty of women in this situation who flat out said to me, my husband was Josh and I left him. We know that it can take like 10 times for a woman to leave. So just because she's in a, an abusive relationship with her husband, does that mean that she can't be held responsible for not protecting her children? The excuse is, is that because she's being controlled. The most dangerous time is when a woman leaves. This whole thing that we can claim that she didn't know 
is a lie. She didn't have to have more kids serving them up on a platter for him. Super grateful that I learned to set boundaries, seek therapy and help, and properly deconstructed from the patriarchal system I was raised in. Millions of women in this world are trapped in abusive, oppressive, patriarchal families, churches, and governments and do not have that choice. For some, that choice to leave can mean death. It's 2022 and I won't stop fighting for women and children trapped in abusive patriarchal systems until I take my last breath. Anna is not the victim when it comes to the children. Anna continues to allow a pedophile to dictate her life and what she does with her children. Anna is broke. <laughs> Completely broke. She has no financial nest egg. For someone who claims they want to help women get out of cults and be independent, why is she smiling talking about Anna not having money? Why does she look so happy talking about this? This is disgusting. The most dangerous time for someone in a domestic violence relationship is when they leave. The majority of homicides related to domestic violence happen when someone's trying to leave. I don't care if Anna's broken. If you're so broken that you can't be there for your children, then you probably shouldn't be a mom. Katie Joy has claimed to be in a domestic abuse relationship and she's also claimed to have been sexually assaulted. I hesitate to question the sexual assault even though the police investigated and they did not find that an assault occurred, I, I do hesitate to question that just because of the serious nature of it. But I do call bullshit on her being in a domestic abuse relationship. Nobody who has been in an abusive relationship is going to sit there and talk about how easy it is to leave. Nobody. Very well known that when you're in an abusive relationship, you lie to people. Janelle Eason was the one that reached out to me. At one point in time, I tried to be nice to her because I felt bad because she was leaving David and I thought I could lend her an ear. Also told me that there was like two or three incidences throughout the time that they were together that he got physical with her. And I don't understand why she is in such a hurry to say that nothing happened. You don't tell the truth to cops you cover for each other super common i posted the rest of the screenshots on my instagram where she actually says that he was physical with her i wasn't following katie joy super closely when this happened but when i did find out about it after the fact it's definitely one of the top five things that she has done that has really really upset me katie joy is sharing private messages that a dv victim sent her and she's sharing them on the internet who does that? She does try to justify this with the clip coming up, but there is no justification for this. Oh, well, you posted Janelle's um, screenshots. Janelle got on like national TV or national like media exposure and said that her husband did nothing to her children. Not uncommon at all for the person who's being abused to defend the person that's abusing them. She was getting back together with him and she told me that he broke her collarbone. I think anyone that's been in a situation like this or in a relationship like this knows that when you're involved with someone that is like this, you will do whatever you can to pacify them, to make things go away, to cover for them. If you had that information, would you sit on it? Would you just sit there and be like, yeah, let's believe Janelle? Or if you had that information, would you actually be like, she told me this? Because I can't think of many outlets that wouldn't get that information out. No. What most people would do if they knew somebody was being abused, they would try to contact that person's family or their friends or the police. They would not make a monetized video exposing all of their private conversations. So really it was just sharing with you the private conversations behind what I was posting. Katie Joy is one person that I don't really respond to because she's so crazy. Stop messaging me and stop begging me to be your friend too. That's pretty pathetic. You sent me like five messages. You can stop now, but here's your clout and uh, Katie Joy, anything they post, they just do it for views, do it for money. Oh, Janellis, you're so cute, Janellis. You are so adorable, Janellis. You are so jealous that you are fired from MTV. You can't handle that you don't have a job anymore. And you're literally gonna just come for me and say that I'm chasing clout. No, honestly, I wish I never had to report on your ass ever again, but you literally cannot stop lying. You are such a liar. You lie about everything. I didn't lie about everything. <laughs> 
you're gonna say I, I'm trying to be your friend, girl. I tried to help your ass when literally no one wanted to help you. When everyone told me you were a fucking liar, I did my best to reach out to you and be compassionate to you. Sharing her private messages all over the internet is being compassionate. Once you went back to David, I was done trying to help you. You told me he abused you. I am so done with your ass. I posted all the shit you told me, Janelle. I can post our entire fucking conversation. Do you want to see all the bullshit and all the fucking shit you're lying about? I am so done with your ass. I tried to help your... F I tried to help you. I offered you support when nobody would fucking talk to you. I went out on a limb because I came from an abusive relationship too. See what I mean? If she had actually been in an abusive relationship, she would completely understand Janelle's actions. And I wanted to help you because I know how hard it is to li leave an abusive relationship. So here's the thing. Amber Portwood is a habitual offender of domestic violence. Andrew Glennon began documenting his abuse. There's been a lot of questions in the media about a incident that occurred in August of 2018 and we're going to talk about that tonight. I was trusted because of my advocacy. I'm not an advocate and what I've done with providing people a platform. I'm not someone that is here to, you know, advocate or, you know, provide resources. And people have been saying well, why are you releasing this? I personally was given it. Any outlet that would have been receiving this information would have released it. Having this kind of audio and video is the kind of stuff that can make people blow up, make tons of money. You know, I could have made a ton of money. I didn't really make that much money. You can't under good conscience say that you did not gain money from this. This is absolutely atrocious. I can't fathom doing something like this and then coming back and blatantly lying that you made no money off of this. I reached out to another connection of mine and I asked them if they could get me in touch with TMZ and I contacted TMZ and I said, hey, I have all this stuff, like, do you want it? And it was never like this conversation of like, she's gonna make money kind of thing. So what I did was I sent it to them saying, do you have interest in this because this is here? And they said, yes, we want this because this was a huge story and people like visuals. People like to see what actually happened. Sometimes people pose as advocates when they're really not advocates. They act as though they care about a people when they really don't care about a people. I don't, as a whole, like to do missing persons cases. Who has been sucked into the missing persons case of Gabby Patino? Whether one person is here or 3,000 people are here, that doesn't matter to me. People here, it's it's low compared to where we're normally at. So I want to make sure that I get people on. Notifications clearly are not working. I don't know what's going on here. It's very bizarre. I'm not seeing people here. It might be the day. It might be the time. I just shared it onto my Instagram. I'm going to see if that helps but we're still seeing low numbers here which is bizarre if you want to join me you can join me if there's no one here that shows up <clears throat> you don't have to be here i don't want to spend a lot of time um if we can't get any more people here i might just cut this short whether one person is here or three thousand people are here that doesn't matter to me i'm waiting to see if more people show up it matters because i want to make sure that i have an engaged like audience and i want to make sure that the audience is like um, all here and if I'm having trouble with notifications and it doesn't get pushed out then it will impact other people that might be wanting to see this on my channel so it just ends up being like I have to do um, I'm trying to do what's best for everyone I do my job for money I'm not gonna bash someone who might be struggling with an addiction viewers voice I'm sorry that a day in May of 2019, I called you a meth head. my husband's brothers he has two that are active addicts they're always everything they're always victims. Aaron's looking really ratchet these late days, like so ratchet. You know, he's like 32 pounds. He is so skinny. He's got like meth bod. Katie said in regards to people telling her that they're going to unsubscribe or whatever, she said, this isn't an airport. You don't have to announce your departure. And in this post, she's announcing her departure from Twitter. Can I just say something? Football is not that serious. Really not that serious. 12 seconds later. We were so far favored of this other team and we crapped the bed. And my husband was like, this is the worst day of my life. He's just like super wasted and he's like, Snoop Dogg. I know there are probably a few people tonight seeing their friends brag about their Bentleys, expensive jewelry, clothes, and trips to Fashion Week. Just remember, material is only material and cannot replace peace in your mind, freedom, and personal autonomy. Also remember, all of that show you are seeing is fake. A show and an image to look bigger, more successful, and greater than they are. Stay humble and remember no one can take away your freedom of mind ever. Anyone with a heart and brain can see that people who flaunt their wealth have something missing in their lives and need to validate themselves through their possessions and feeling superior to others.
And if you need to take a hit while you're live streaming, you have a problem. You should be able to live stream and talk to your people without needing to get high. I mean, I'm all for people wanting to smoke pot, but if you need to stop your live stream to smoke weed, you should probably think about what, what's going on in your life. I am not just an ally. I am bisexual woman that is married to a man. Well, too bad for her. I'm not really into women, but I guess I am flattered. He okay. gets mad about doxing. He uses my full fucking name all the time when I don't use it professionally. It's Katie P Paulson, Katie Joy from Without a Crystal Ball. He made my life a living hell in the middle of a lawsuit and made my life worse by accusing me of doxing. I was told that the six-year-old girl that Shane Dawson thought was sexy is Redacted's daughter. Here she docked Sassy's picture and her full first and last name since she loves to share private conversations she's had with people. When she shared this one, had LB's phone number on the screen. Unveiling the Masks also redacted that. And I also don't dox people. So Katie Joy Paulson tried to dox me in Unirock's server. The dox was deleted and Unirock is no longer supporting Katie because of this. This is demented behavior, truly. I think this is the administrator says, thanks, I'm sorry, Katie. I had to remove the comment, the link that had the name in it. This is what Katie says. Whoops, sorry. I didn't see that. I feel really bad about this with Charlotte. I saw that she, someone, I saw that she got doxxed and that made me really sad. <laughs> person that doxxed her it wasn't called for think that because you don't agree with her retaliation should be doxing you got really upset when your kids got doxxed and i'm so happy so sad i don't mean happy i was really sad to hear about the doxing that you went through but you have not ever really cared that i've gone through that so um just grow a thicker skin everyone i have been doxxed a million times Matt Bear um, doxed my husband's um, employer. Katie, you doxed his place of employment yourself. Yeah, CenturyLink just decided to lay off thousands of employees for fun. Thanks for doing that, Matt. Here she is saying that it's possible CenturyLink fired Todd because her son has so many health conditions and was costing the company money. We are like wondering if my husband was laid off because my son's medical expenses are really high. Here she's saying Todd was laid off because of COVID. I don't share a lot of my personal life. I'm just trying to show a little bit more of our lives, get acquainted with what I do when I'm not online. It's never just been about stories. It's also been about stories about our life. We had to get our car fixed. My husband and I both have ADHD. I don't put lots of like personal details out there. Sometimes I think I've said too much about my personal life. My husband had to take our cat to the vet. Oh my gosh. Do any of you have an animal that literally is going to be your million dollar animal? We have one right now. His name is Rodan. He is two years old. He loves to eat things that he's not supposed to eat. I'm a YouTuber. I don't talk about my, my personal life. Sure. Very much. I was horrendously bullied because of my ADHD and my like hyperactivity and my inability to bite my tongue. That was like my number one issue with my ADHD was my like verbal impulsivity. And I would get into like arguments and stuff with everyone in school. I left um, St. Anthony and I never looked back. I've never lived there since. I will not live there again. I will never go to a high school reunion. I have zero friends that I talked to from high school. I literally hate St. Anthony. I don't talk about my family that much. Tomorrow is my husband's 50th birthday. Mr. Crystal Ball is going to be 50 years old. Oh my god. He's going to be 50 in like <laughs> My husband's going to be 50. <laughs> that means I'm old. So me turning 50 all of a sudden is about you. My mom has really bad lungs and she just tested positive for COVID. I have been with my family all day, spending time with them and also ensuring I make time to call my mom and speak to my dad. I posted a few things about the royal family in the few moments I had to think, but mostly I needed today to decompress. My mom is the most important woman in my life and her care is more important to me than a stupid baby announcement by Jed Duggar. If I couldn't sleep as a kid, I would find myself at the top of the stairs crying for my parents. Instead of comfort, I was met with the firm hand of multiple spankings until I cried myself to sleep. 
I grew up being spanked and a wooden spoon was the favorite. I thought every kid got spanked and hit. My parents used a wooden spoon, belt, or their hands. I grew up Catholic. I never got hit in the face other than if my grandma would slap me, but my mom liked the wooden spoon. My dad used his hand and it was always the backside. My brother is a chemist. I had an older brother and I feel like we fought more than we got along. My brother and I have never honestly be been close and it's not like because I don't love him. It's just like, he's four years older than me. When I was brought home from the hospital, my brother told my mom to just leave me on the front steps. I can barely eat with my husband. Today we had some pizza for dinner <clears throat> and I was like watching my phone so I didn't have to listen to him chew. Cause there's certain foods my husband chews and it's so loud and I can hear it. And he like makes this like really like this wet noise with his mouth. Oh, chewing is just like one of my literal pet peeves. I can't listen to chewing. But I will literally watch all of her videos of her eating corn dogs. There are days when I'm pretty certain that I'm slightly autistic when it comes to sensory issues. The crunch is really the satisfying part. When he has to eat something great, he has to like chew very fast like crackers. Oh. The Real Housewives of Saint, oh, I keep wanting to say Saint Paul because that's where I'm from. We've struggled a lot since moving to Hanover. It's difficult in Minnesota. I'm like 20 minutes from Maple Grove. We live out like kind of in the country. I live out in the country. We live in the country. I don't know why Katie keeps saying she lives in the country when she does not. Todd actually like... I am. This is not the country. Look at all those homes around her home. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Liar, liar, pants on fire. If your neighbors are so close by that they can hear you fart in your backyard, you do not live in the country. See, sorry, I couldn't think about it. I actually don't go live very often. I am. <coughs> also. <coughs> An atheist. My lawsuit with the Westbrooks, which is now settled, praise the Jesus upstairs who happens to respect everyone's right to believe in God. Being a Christian does not make anyone morally superior to anyone else, okay? It just doesn't. I have a lot of Christian conservatives that follow me and we are just as kind to them as we are to the liberals. So if I'm an atheist, does that mean I don't have morals? <laughs> does that mean they're better than me because they're Christians? I'm not gonna trash any faith. The self-righteous Christians. I bet you she's in the cult. Grateful for them for doing the Lord's work, as I will say. Someone asks, Lord's work? I thought you were an atheist. It's an expression. It's like she constantly picks at people. Instead of like actually commenting and like being supportive and like talking to her fans, she's condescending and she bullies them. She is like the epitome of a gaslighter. She can somehow spin anything. She lives in a completely different reality. He talks so much that I think he just likes the way that his ears, his voice sounds. They really don't care about the content that they do. They just really are obsessed with growth. Money, 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 money. Do you see the hypocrisy here? Just because someone has a platform and followers doesn't make them good people. Katie, I 1000% agree with you on that. It's fine to have opinions, but just don't don't lie. Don't accuse someone of doing something they didn't do and say it as a fact because that's actually defamation. It's the hypocrisy for me. It's the utter hypocrisy for me. She puts you on Block Island. Link in description box to my video of Katie blocking people for 14 minutes. All she's doing is talking to an echo chamber. Who has credibility issues? It's not me. Fuck off, Lizzie. I hope you like, fuck off, Lizzie.